welcome back to my channel. My name's Phil A. Mignong, and this is Medium Rare Poetry. Today's poem is taken from my playlist entitled A Bolognese of Ballads, and relates to a true event that took place in the Northern Territory of Australia in June of 2022. NASA had always wanted to take photographs of our skies above Australia because they can't see them from the Northern Territory. <laughs> so our Northern Territory government liaised with NASA for them to launch three rockets equipped with high-tech box brownie cameras to take the photographs that they needed. These weren't humongous rockets. They were short ones to run for 15 minutes, take their shots and then come back to Earth. So this poem is all about what happened then. I give you Australia Gets a Shot Away. Australia Gets a Shot Away by Phil A. Mignon. Here's a great Australian story from the Northern Territory. It will make your very heart fill up with pride. For these pioneering legends are our nation's vital engines, taking hardship and privation in their stride. The NT's chief, Natasha, placed a call straight through to NASA with a plan to get their boffins out of bed. We would build a spaceship station for our big and best relation. We've got space to burn and more so overhead. They jumped upon this offer, for we'd raid our federal coffers, we would build a brand new corrugated shed. So the plan was put in motion, that they'd sail across the ocean, for the southern hemisphere could now be read. Enter Barry Smith, the ranger, to the outback was no stranger. They'd promoted him to be the flight director. So he cleared a heap of mulga, wasn't neat, but wasn't vulgar. To this country, he'd been sworn as its protector. The facility erected, it was soon to be detected that they'd need a dish for tracking space with ease. The budget didn't cover this expensive little mother, so they pinched a wok from one hung Lowe's Chinese. The rocket lobbed in Darwin on a battleship named Carmen. The description from the press proclaimed it cute. Lest the thing should ever tarnish, they had smothered it in varnish and then strapped it to the bed of Barry's ute. Delivered in a jiffy, oh, this masterpiece was spiffy, as it stood there proud and upright on the pad. The gantry was a windmill sporting rusty struts for infill, which was borrowed from our Barry's farming dad. A busload full of locals, some would say were dressed as yokels, lugging eskies full of sausages and beer, appeared and set up deck chairs, naked skin except for chest hairs, they began to search the site for souvenirs. Now Barry had a worry so he leapt into a flurry, quite bewildered at the presence of this bunch. A misspelling in the paper bade them all to see this caper for a NASA-sponsored space exploring lunch. Then to the land of Arnhem came a band with Johnny Farnham to immortalise this moment with a song. The Yobbos laid a sausage ring around the shiny rocket thing a barbecue like this could not go wrong. Then there was a little catch. I say, does someone have a match? I need a flame to ignite its starting wick. Surely you'd be joking, cause we're all a quit of smoking, for the doctors told us that would make us sick. Now the local missions parson had been charged on counts of arson, so unto the holy chapel they did hasten. With a dozen seasoned snatchers, they acquired several matches with a hum 
humble Hail Mary they were chastened. The countdown now had started, so the crowd had all departed to the safety of a mobile pop-up pub. Then a flamin' willy-willy, blue-red dust all willy-nilly, and the clock was stopped. There's tension at the hub. At a quarter after midnight, the wind dropped, so by torchlight, Barry lit the fuse, cause he had lost the toss. With a whoosh and flames of Satan, and the cheers of those awaiting, she took off to film our famous Southern Cross. There was swearing kinds of lingo as the noise scared off the dingoes with a flash of 20,000 brilliant lumens. And the wombats dug down deeper, poor koalas woken sleepers, and the crocs gave up their appetite for humans. The little pocket rocket with a timer in its socket, only flew for 15 minutes, not so hard. In a cloud of outback dust, cop that you Elon Musk, it returned to Barry's neatly raked backyard. The mission was successful, though the process was quite stressful, and our Barry puffed his chest no shirt could hide. The sausages were roasted, and the local lads all boasted, till they found that they had only fried one side. Our spaceport thus was christened, and the Chinese took a listen, with alarm bells ringing in their halls of power. For they thought that we were dopey, full of booze and rather mopey, but right now we had a rocket launching tower. We thank the blokes from NASA, their technology's a gasser, but we now can grasp the reins and carry on. We'll do without imposters, with our rockets made from Fosters, and a sausage sizzling spaceport from now on. Well done, Barry and the team. This goes to show the resourcefulness of these wonderful Northern Territorians. From here on in, Australia has great plans, and um, the next event will be putting a kangaroo on the moon, which will indeed be a great leap for mankind. But that's for another day. So thank you for listening today. Please subscribe to our tr tribe and press the like button and share this with your friends. So you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.